Welcome back to the wiring module. We will be installing an MPPT charge controller today. I have the Renogy DC to DC charger. This is a really cool unit. It's got the battery isolator charger off the uh, alternator and the MPPT all in one. So this is really cool. I don't have to set up another battery isolator. It has it all built in. It's a 50 amp charge controller and I can charge off the alternator and the sun. So this is really awesome unit. I'm actually really excited about this and we're going to install it. It's a pretty quick, basic, easy installation. Before we start, I just wanted to note there is gonna be a Van Kooks Masterclass teaching you guys how to build a van and step-by-step. Step, it's very helpful and we're still working on it depending on how long ago this video was made and what time in the future you are, it could be done. So check it out, vancooks.com. And it's gonna be very helpful. And we did that for you guys so you guys could just have an easier time building these vans. First off, we'll just take this cover off, see what it entails. Well, here it is, I took the two plastic covers off and it looks like it's pretty straightforward. It's got a solar panel plus here. This wire will run to the positive of my alternator. This will hook into my negative bus bar. And this is my positive out, which will come into my positive bus bar. So pretty cool, straightforward unit. I'm gonna, you know, get all the wires ready and crimped and prepped for this. And then we're gonna dive into it. All right, we are hooking up our a &L fuse to our positive bus bar. And this is going to run into the fuse panel here and this will have all of our accessories so we're going to do a little s loop here but first i need to install this into the wall it's nice to use just a hand screwdriver because you can over crank this stuff and it is just plastic and you will crack it so that's why i'm using the hand screwdriver the old school so we'll get that on the wall and this will go here and now we'll need to cut another wire for this i'm going to put it there so i have a wire cut I need to cut that a little more just to keep it clean and now i'll show you how to strip and crimp these wires for just these thicker ones so first you want to get the terminal in that matches what you're putting it on. I'm just putting it on this small bolt and that will work perfect. You don't want to do something too big like this because then it's just going to be a loose connection. So this will give me a nice tight connection. So I found the proper piece and how I strip these is I just, since I don't have a proper wire stripper, I just get in here and I just kind of cut around, do a few little cuts, and then I just pull it off. Then I have nice, two nice little stripped ends, and then I just place my terminal end on here, like so. And then on this side, I need a thicker one, so I'll grab this guy, and now I will take it, I use a vice grip to crimp these, so let's take it over to the vice. If you don't have a vice grip, I recommend you just buy some nice wire crimpers, mine quite, Mine are from Harbor Freight and they're not quite strong enough. So I am gonna use the vise. And what I like to do is you see, I put it just under there and then I just give it a few cranks and pull it off. And look at that, that is a very nicely crimped wire. Like there's no way that's gonna come undone. So the next step is the heat shrink and I'm slipping these on here. They look a little big, but once we hit them with the under $20 Harbor Freight Warrior heat gun, they'll look nice. So there you go. I just hit them with the heat shrink. They look much better now. And now let's go install them. Okay, so I got the wire into my a &L 60 amp fuse and it's looking really good. I'm just gonna tighten it down and I showed you the assembly on how these fuses go. Now we got our fuse installed. And next to this will be our fuse box. So we'll get into that next. We are working with a 12 volt fuse panel. These things are pretty straightforward. So when we're looking at it, you have your fuse slots. So basically a fuse is almost like a switch. 
If the fuse is in, the wire will be hot. If there is no fuse, the wires won't be hot. So you can kind of set up all your leads without any fuses in, just to be safe. Kind of just give you a rundown. These are all your positive connections here down below. And then up here is going to be all your negative connections. So this is just kind of like a negative bus bar here. And it's all connected here. You'll put your negative lead here and your positive down here. So what you want to do first is kind of configure how you want your system laid out. I'm going to have my fuse box right here because a lot of my cords just come straight from here up. So it's a nice, convenient, easy spot. And the first order of business is screwing it into the wall. So I just have some small screws and I'm going to do that. Okay, so right now I'm hooking up my negative for my fuse panel to my negative bus bar. I really like using these bus bars. It keeps everything nice and clean. So now we're going to connect the um, alternator, the uh, starter battery, to this Renogy DC to DC charger. So the first order of business is I'm just going to run a wire down through here. This guy, six gauge, down through here and around. And I'm going to set up another 60 amp ANL fuse. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in right now. So I got my first lead from the alternator spot here in the DC to DC charger. It's going to come down around through the below the negative bus bar. It's going to go into this fuse here. And now what I've went ahead and done is I've ran a cord all the way to my battery in the transit it's under the front seat kind of makes things easy so i've ran this cord this six gauge wire all the way along the front and i'm going to hook it up to the battery but first i got to cut and crimp this wire so i'm not going to get too far ahead of myself because i need to use the vice grip to crimp so i'm going to do that i'm going to measure it and i'll have it nicely have it hit hit there so let's Get this going all right so i went and i cut crimped and heat shrunk this wire and this is going to go onto the fuse here first step of business is getting a washer on there and then i'll put that on there and now i'll just hook this up really quick actually before i hook it up i'm just going to run the wire up to the starter battery Okay, so right under the front seat, nice and convenient, is the starter battery. I'm just going to pop the uh, nut off here. Take this in here and put it on. All right, I got my alternator lead in there. Now let's go back, hook up the fuse. All right, tighten down this A&L fuse. And basically you do the washer, the fuse, the washer, the locking washer, and then the nut. And then this one's just a 9 16 so I'll just tighten it. Nice and tight, not too tight. You don't want to over tighten this stuff because then it'll be hard to get off and you might even pull your unit off the wall. So there you go. And they come with these fancy little covers. They look nice and clean in there. So I'll get that on there. And over here, I'm plugged in and I set up this switch for my solar charge controller I can kill the whole unit and that's what I went ahead and did while installing so I didn't mess anything up I also have a battery disconnect here so I can turn the battery power off but you'll notice if you just turn the batteries off your solar is still going to go so you will need an off for your charge controller and let's turn that on and hopefully we see a blinking red light here to signify that we are solar charging our battery and this should be blinking as well to show that we are solar charging our lithium house batteries so here we go give it a sec to boot up all right it took a little bit to boot up but i got a blinking light showing that i am charging my starter battery i got a blinking light here showing that i am charging my lithium batteries here but they're full so i'm just kind of floating power here and this is the uh, renergy battery monitor it's kind of cool i just don't really like how it flashes that light it's quite annoying to have that flashing light the light flashes when you're getting a charge so it's flashing 
and this is flashing now let's get the car let's start the car and let's see if this red light turns solid i don't have a smart alternator so i didn't have to hook up the ignition alternator this here and i don't have a battery uh monitoring system that i'm going to hook into here i can always do that later i'm just going to basically go off of this so let's do this All right, so the charge controller is all hooked up and it's charging the alternator now. That's what the blinking light is because we are getting enough sun. So we're charging our starting battery and we're kind of just floating power here. Our battery is fully charged and we're getting a good charge. And I tested the alternator from the, from the cord running through and it charges while we drive. So everything works, the Renogy uh, DC to DC charge controller is a really awesome thing. I think if you got this, it's definitely worth the money. So I figured I'd just run through all the electronics. I know it just all of a sudden popped up here on the wall, but starting here, the solar comes in from outside. And then we got a 60 amp A and L fuse and it goes into this switch, which then goes into the MPPT charge controller. And if you have this switch here, you can actually turn the MPPT charge controller off. And then I have the switch here for the battery. So if you turn that off and that off, it's gonna kill the whole system. If it's sunlight and you're getting power from solar and you just turn off the batteries, the charge controller will still float all that power and it'll still all be running. So it is nice to have the power off on the panel so you can actually shut the whole system down if you need. So I got my 12 volt fuse box here, the cover's off because I was just kind of finishing things up. That's a Blue C uh, 12 volt fuse box. I think it's pretty common everyone uses these. I got these on a 60 amp inline a &L fuse and everything kind of comes off the bus bar. So this is my positive bus bar and it's great to use the bus bar it keeps everything a little more organized so i got the bus bar and then the charge comes out of my charge controller here it should be a red cable but i ran out it goes into another 60 amp fuse blade and that goes to my bus bar here and then all these bus bars are just hooked up to the batteries here and that's all off of uh this switch and that's all connected to the batteries and this is a thick four gauge wire coming into the bus bar so i have that hooked up to the bus bar this is the uh coming from the car battery so this charges while we drive this comes through 60 amp fuse and this comes all the way through around and up into the renogy dc to dc charge controller this thing's awesome I highly recommend this, especially if you are have lithium batteries and you're wanting to charge your car while driving off an alternator. This thing's great. It basically does it all and it's not much work. So I highly recommend this. This is probably the coolest thing in the van. And then one more thing we got here is off the positive bus bar, we have a lead. It comes through and it comes into a 250 amp fuse. That goes into my Ames uh, power inverter, 1200 watt. And then this is the out, so power goes out. I have a breaker here, 15 amp breaker, and that goes into my breaker box. And that hooks up all the outlets, and then all the outlets come out. And I try to get all the proper stuff. It's really hard getting electronic parts these days but I got all my outs coming out. They run along and then they just go up into the wall. And then here I just use this monster cable. It's a uh, 12 gauge. It has three 12 gauge stranded wires in there. And this is just an old extension cord. It's a really nice one. And I'm just running that to my power inlet. So if I wanted to charge off shore power, I got it just right here. There you go. And I can charge if I'm if I ever have shore power off of this 
Ames power because it has the auto transfer built in. And this is pretty cool. I did wire all this. I have a video on how I wired this box. This is a midnight solar uh, breaker box and I got the 15 and 10 amp breakers in there. And this was a real fun project. I actually really enjoy doing all this. So all that's done. And that's just kind of the van's power system. I figured I'd share it with you since we're sharing all of the other van build stuff. And then all my batteries I just have under this box. And they have the lithium heat enabled battery, which is pretty cool. So if it was cold and I wasn't getting a charge, I can just turn on my lithium heat enabled batteries there. So that's it, kooks. Thank you for watching. I'll get out of the sun so I can get a better shot. And if you're interested in how to build a van, you've come this far. We have a van build masterclass on our website and it's gonna help you do all this work, make a nice, clean, beautiful home. So I highly recommend checking that out and like and subscribe and we will see you kooks soon.